Howdy folks, thanks for coming to watch another one of my videos. Today we're going to discuss the Batonoff mask. What is a Batonoff mask? A Batonoff mask is an inexpensive tool to help achieve exact focus when doing astrophotography. It was designed by Pavel Batonoff, a Russian amateur astrophotographer, uh, and as I say, he did the math to make to figure out how it works, and he'd done a good job. They make a Batonoff mask and a tri a tri mask. They also produce a Hartman focusing mask and a, and a Carey focusing mask. Now, all three of them are designed by three different people, but they all achieve the same thing by various means. Each one's got its own design. My preference is the original is what I call the original Batonoff mask, and your preference could be one of the other ones. This Batonoff mask is designed. You've got slots in the mask that uh, are straight on one one half of it, and then another one that they go off. I guess it's maybe 20 degrees, 26 degrees up, and 26 degrees down, and it produces. And these two produce an X like this. And then the one, this side here produces a straight line, and as you focus, as you start out of focus, it'll either be up or down, and as you come into focus, it'll, it'll center in the X, and then as you go past that focus, it'll go back above it. So you're, you're trying to get it to where you see the, three, the X with a straight line right through the center of all, all three, all three uh, crosses produce a, a, a center point at the star. The masks, they all go on the beginning of your optical train. Let it be a camera and lens that you're doing astrophotography with or a telescope that you're doing astrophotography with, but they all go on the beginning of the plane. Now like on a camera lens, like this one is designed for, I think it's a 72 millimeter uh, filter diameter of a lens and it actually just kind of snaps into place within the filter now and, and they work fine that way uh, but one thing you have to pay attention to is like on this this particular lens the focus is actually focused within the lens using the lenses go in and out inside here and there's no external moving parts now on some lenses they actually use the outside uh, lens to focus and it will retract and push out depending on where the focus is. Now on that kind of lens what happens is whenever you're in focus well you've got to get this filter out of there and sometimes you can actually pull it up and mess up your focus. Now another option is ones that go over like the dew shield of the lens. Now uh, I don't know where you can buy them or not, but I had uh, printed one up, 3D printed one on my 3D printer that actually just goes right over the uh, dew shield of the lens. So there's nothing there putting pressure on it to push it in or to pull it out that could mess up the focus on the lens. It just, it just sits right on. Now as you notice, this one's got a little wiggle to it. So the center of the mask does not have to be in the center of the of the optics to work properly. It'll work the same if it's a little offset or not. Now one thing I noticed that on on this type that goes on uh, the lens, if if you don't have it flush to the, to the end of the telescope, it could be cattywampus a little bit like that, it does show a little different uh, but it still will focus good but your star your, your star looks funny. And like I say, they come in different sizes. This one is uh, this one's designed for for my SLT 130. And also, this Batonoff mask is designed for uh, several different sizes of telescopes, and uh, it's got pins that uh, you can screw in and screw out. That's got uh, a plastic sleeve on it so it doesn't damage the uh, end of the telescope and you can actually adjust it up and down. 
move all three of them in so it'll it'll grab different sized scopes and a lot of them are like that uh, that you can get so one size will fit two or three different size scopes if they're all pretty much close to the same uh, millimeters of the scope I think there's probably about a inch or two uh, manipulation on some of them and also uh, if you damage one of these, like this one, I've actually kind of broke it. Uh, it, it, it still works fine. Uh, I think unless you completely break some of these slots out of here, uh, you should be good with this plastic, thin plastic, even if it's cracked. And it just, it just goes, like I say, it just, it just goes right over the end of the lint, end of the scope like that. And you focus it off and then you just, you know, take it off when you're ready to image. Now on my Edge HD I've got one that has actually got a cutout center in it for if I ever get a Hyperstar I can put the Hyperstar on and then this can slide over the Hyperstar and everything and, and take it on and off without removing the Hyperstar. Uh, they do make them that are completely solid and don't have the center on them and actually go over the edge of it. Now on this on this edge, what happens is the uh, uh, lens cap has actually got it locks into place, and there's two pins that stick out from the edge into the center of this, so the uh, lens cap will lock into place. So when you're putting these on, you got to make sure that you get it under one side of the of the peg, and then you can bend it around and get it under the other side, and then it'll sit flat. You don't really want, like I say, if it's cattywampus, your your uh, cross your uh, spikes look a little a little weird. Uh, you can still achieve focus with it, but it just looks weird. So it's kind of easier if you make sure that it's good and flush against whatever you're using. On scopes that need to be collimated, like reflectors, uh, if it's not collimated right, the center core of the star can actually be kind of bulky looking and elongated a little bit and uh, uh, so it really helps and of course for astrophotography you really need a good uh, collimation on your reflector telescopes. And I guess you can use it for optical viewing too but since you can't really zoom in on the star to bring it up the spikes are kind of hard to see visually because you don't your eye does can't sit there and absorb more light than the eye can absorb where a camera lens you can make a longer exposure and absorb more light so the spikes are are more prominent you know, on a camera so we'll take a look at uh, what it looks like on a camera and uh, uh, go from there extremely out of focus but as I do the focus I'm going the wrong direction you see it's getting bigger so let's go the other way we see and we're reducing it down. The spikes should start to appear here in a minute. There's your spikes coming up. As you see uh, to the there to the right center. And then a little more focus to go to the right, left, and then we'll go back to center. And when we get to center and you see three spikes, one in the center and two to the left one to the left and one to the right. There's your focus point right there.